I'd like to say good morning to you today on this Christmas day that has been set aside for us to just reflect and just to think about our, our Lord Jesus coming into the world. Before I do anything, I'd like to just read a passage of scripture from Luke chapter 2, verses 10 to 14. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. I'd like to say greetings from Sister Pauline and myself, the leadership team of West Croydon Church. I would like to wish you a prosperous Christmas. Christmas, Christmas can mean different things for so many of us. For some of you, this may be, may be your first Christmas without a loved one who is no longer here and their place in the home is empty. We're thinking about you and we're praying for you. To others, it is the only time that everyone can come together, even for a day, to touch base and to catch up. To others, it's just another day. Still got the bills to pay, but grateful for the extra hours at work towards the bills. Life, however, still goes on. <clears throat> But God wants us to use this season to stop for a while and to remember what it's really all about. It's a time of hope. With all that is going on around us, we can feel anxious about the future. But God wants us to be at peace because the hostility that separated us from him is over. The thought that I want to bring to us today is the birth of Jesus ends our hostility with God. When Jesus came into the world, the angels came to announce that the war was over between God and men. Jesus Christ, in the Hebrews called the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, is here. In verse 14 of the passage just read, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. The aim of the birth of Jesus was for God to demonstrate his peace to mankind. The word peace in our English language does not fully describe the Hebrew meaning of the word. The biblical concept of peace comes from a Hebrew root word, shalom, which means to be complete or to be sound. The Lord told Aaron, to bless the children of Israel with the following blessing in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that word peace is shalom. Jesus used the word peace to greet his disciples even when he rose from the dead, it says in John 20, verse 19, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Shalom Alechem. In John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When Jesus came, God said, My peace has come to the earth. True peace is embodied in a person. This person is Jesus Christ. When the angels announced 
peace and goodwill, they were announcing that he, the Prince of Peace, has come. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, it was prophesied that this Prince of Peace would come. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is the ruler of peace. The peace that the world is looking for will never come until the Prince of Peace comes and takes control of the government of our world. The peace that we enjoy is controlled by the force of weapons. The peace is man-made. We are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ as the Sar Shalom. So when Jesus came, the power and the ability to end hostility and strife was now present and embodied in a person at Bethlehem. This same gospel that he bought has been given to us to take to the world and it's called the Ministry of Reconciliation. From Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God has always been looking for a way to bring mankind back to himself in perfect harmony and peace. Before sin entered the world, Adam and Eve had harmony with God, with their father. The Bible tells us that God used to meet with them at the cool of the day. And this harmony speaks of being in agreement. It speaks of being in accord. The Bible tells us in Amos 3.3 3, that two cannot walk together lest they be in agreement. There must be peace. When the peace was broken in Eden, we had to approach God through a substitute, an innocent animal. But when Jesus came, he started to walk with men again. It says in Matthew 1 verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And it also tells us in John 1 verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The birth of Jesus then signifies to us that the war with God is over. It's a time for peace and goodwill with God our Father. The Bible tells us the reason why Jesus, the Son of God, was manifest was that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? It says it's to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has restored his peace to mankind because of the cross. He lives and dwells with us. So Jesus came to be the sacrifice for our sins. It tells us in Colossians 1, 19 to 20, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Jesus did not stop at saying that he would just come and live amongst men. He gave us the commission to take this shalom, this peace amongst men, this harmony, this friendship. So God has ceased his war with us even though we were enemies. He wants us to cease the wars with our own selves and within each other. Let us stop the war with ourselves. It says in Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. This is talking about Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Too many people, even Christians, even at a time like this, have mental anxiety. They are not at peace with themselves. 
Some are thinking I'm too short, too fat, too skinny, too dark, or whatever else. But the birth of Jesus is the hope that you can have peace with yourself. Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine 39 says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus came so that we can have peace with ourselves and fall in love with you. He loves you. This peace that has come also is to stop the war within our families. Family. Why not use this Christmas to reach out to someone who needs God's peace? Even though they may not deserve it. God can forgive and bring peace to them. Why not reach out to someone over this period of time? Children, whether you're young or old, end the war with your parents. Yes, what they may have done may have scarred you and you carry the wound. Cry out to the Prince of Peace in this Christmas. We need to end the war with work. It was very important that I, <laughs> I bought this in as I was thinking about it, some of us need to accept the work that God has placed us in as a place of our assignment where he wants us to be. The reason why you may be having mental anxiety in this area may be because you are not at peace with God's will for your life concerning especially your work. Stop the complaining. Pray. Ask God to sustain you or even move you. We need to end the war with the church. And again, this is something that may be very important for us, especially at a time like this. We will not always get it right as a church, but don't pull away. Someone said, I left the church because they were not loving. By doing so, that person have taken that love that that church needed. If you've not received the peace of God and you are struggling and warring inside, God wants to give you his peace that Jesus came to give this Christmas. Only by accepting Jesus can we receive this shalom. Having this peace does not mean that your environment changes. Sometimes it does. The changes that take place is inside of us. Jesus was asleep in a storm. The storm did not affect his peace. The birth of Jesus then is for believers to reflect on God's invitation to shalom. The birth of Jesus to the unbeliever is to give you forgiveness and hope. To accept this shalom then we must first, the Bible tells us to repent and ask God to forgive us. Stop trying to do it your own way. The price has been paid. The Messiah has come. Yes, there is hostility out there. But you can, be, you can make peace with God. The price has been paid. If you are in hostility with God through your sin, he wants you to receive this peace. Why not say this prayer after me? If you don't know Jesus, and as I give this message, I'm giving it to the church, but there may be some of you that are watching this message and, and saying, you know, this Christmas, is it just about the razzmatazz? Is it about the, you know, retail industry making more money? No, it's more than that. This is what it's become, but it was really a time of hope. And I'm saying to you, if you want to today to make a decision for Jesus in this Christmas period, he has come into the world and he wants to give you eternal life. If that's you, why don't you say this prayer with me? If you don't know Jesus, why don't you say this prayer with me? Just say with me, Lord God, I realize that I'm a sinner. I'm truly sorry and repent of my sins. Please forgive me, I pray, and give me salvation in the name of your son, Jesus. 
Your word says if we publicly declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we will experience salvation. I thank you for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, why don't you contact us? Just let us know that you've prayed that prayer. So in conclusion, just saying to us about this shalom, this peace that has come at Christmas. When you have this shalom, you have security and protection. You are contented. We are blessed with health with this shalom. Because shalom also means prosperity. We are physically and mentally vigorous and free from disease with this shalom. We will succeed. We are in harmony. And that harmony is the absence of hostility with God and man. We have Jesus, the Prince of Peace. So from myself and from Rescordian Church, from the leadership, we're saying to you, have a peaceful Christmas with your family. And God bless you till we meet again in the new year.